okay hi everyone uh, today i would like to discuss about uh, carbon nanotubes carbon nanotubes are uh, one of the form of uh, carbon that also exist in many other forms uh, that we studied uh, diamond graphite fullerene and recently it also exists in uh, two dimensional sheet and that is graphene this carbon nanotube is a one dimensional uh, material which was actually uh, first prepared uh, by uh, Marinobu Endo as uh, part of his PhD studies uh, in, uh, at the University of Orleans in France. He prepared uh, this carbon nanotube of about uh, 7 nanometer in diameter using uh, vapor growth technique. Uh, but uh, he did not study in detail about that. Later in uh, 1991, Sumio Ijima found two types of uh, nano materials so that is single walled carbon nanotubes and multi walled uh, carbon nanotubes uh, single walled carbon nanotubes are actually made up of one sheet of graphene rolled up into the form of a cylindrical tube and multi walled carbon nanotubes means they are made up of two to three or more than two uh, graphene sheets uh, they will be rolled up in the form of uh, cylindrical tubes uh, and he studied its properties and all uh, so then uh, the carbon nanotubes uh, came into existence that is carbon nanotubes are new form of hexagonal network of carbon at carbon atoms rolled up in the form of cylindrical shape he is actually professor marinobu endo he is a professor in electrical and electronics engineering at shinshu university i just uh, this is just for the information he was the one who prepared the nanometers for the first time and later uh, Sumio Ijima, he invented two types of carbon nanotubes, single world carbon nanotubes and multi world carbon nanotubes. Okay, this is uh, the slide showing uh, the first one. Okay, this one is a graphene sheet, uh, okay, two dimensional sheet. If you roll that sheet in the form of a uh, cylindrical tube, we call it as a carbon nanotube. So, if it is made up of one graphene sheet, we call it as single world carbon nanotube. If it is made up of two to three, graphene sheet then we call the tube as uh, multi walled carbon nanotubes in single walled uh, carbon nanotube uh, we have three types of uh, uh, carbon nanotubes and let, let us discuss uh, that uh, single walled carbon nanotube these are all multi walled carbon nanotubes you can see the way uh, this is a digital image this is not the actual image of uh, the multi walled carbon nanotubes it's made up of uh, yellow blue just to distinguish uh, different uh, layers of graphene uh, they have given different colors multi walled <coughs> okay, this is how uh, the multi walled and the single walled carbon nanotubes uh, appears okay uh, in single walled we have three types as i told you uh, the first one is armchair and second one is zigzag and the third one is uh, chiral uh, carbon nanotube you can see the structural differences uh, the arrangement of uh, carbon atoms the hexagonal ring the orientation of uh, hexagonal ring of uh, cnt in all the three types are completely different the first one the armchair uh, the uh, the hexagonal rings uh, they are arranged in the form of a chair form armchair form uh, that is it is highlighted in a local area and you can see the same uh, arrangement is not observed in case of uh, zigzag uh, carbon tubes it is completely different you can see here uh, the horizontal uh, hexagonal rings are horizontally arranged here however in case of zinc zigzag carbon nanotubes they are vertically aligned okay but in case of chiral chiral is similar to armchair but it is a twisted twisted uh, armchair chiral uh, carbon nanotube you can see it's not symmetric when you draw a line at the center of this tube uh the two halves are not mirror images of each other okay so therefore it is a symmetric carbon nanotube and it is very costly also so all the three forms are having uh, different structures they exhibit different properties and they can be used for different applications that's why carbon nanotubes are fascinating materials okay this is another picture showing uh, three types of uh, single walled carbon nanotubes the first one is armchair 
The second one is uh, zigzag. It, you can see the hexagonal rings are vertically arranged. In the first case, horizontally, and third one is a twisted. And in the bottom, uh, we have uh, the top view of the corresponding uh, uh, CNTs. You can see the inner surface and also the outer edges uh, appearance are completely different. You can see in chiral uh, carbon tube, it is like a spiral type of uh, arrangement of carbon atoms in chiral carbon nanotubes. So these are structurally completely different. Okay. So these are the some of the same uh, uh, tem electron microscope images of carbon nanotubes grown on some substrate. Uh, the scale is around 500 nanometer. You can see how beautifully they have grown vertically on the substrate. So these are all uh, carbon nanotubes uh, that are vertically arranged. And this is another uh, electron microscope image uh, showing uh, carbon nanotubes grown on silicon carbide uh, substrate. For the growth, you need to have a substrate. This is uh, entangled or coiled shape of uh, CNTs, uh, which are grown without uh, substrate. And the first two are with substrate. These are the real images of uh, the carbon nanotubes. So let us look at uh, the preparation of this carbon nanotubes. This carbon nanotube uh, is prepared by various methods, especially the Sumio Ijima I showed you earlier is a picture who invented a single walled and multi walled carbon nanotube for the first time. He prepared those two materials by arc discharge method. Later, uh, now uh, recently, the Smallis group uh, were pioneers in this uh, field, uh, CNT. They prepared uh, this carbon nanotubes uh, by laser ablation method. Uh, these two are all uh, physical methods and a bit costly. I'll uh, <coughs> discuss about uh, chemical vapor <coughs> deposition method, CBD method, which is relatively simple as compared to the first two methods uh, uh, that I mentioned. CBD method is uh, actually bottom up approach, means you will have a carbon source uh, that will be in the form of vapor and that carbon source is made to dissociate into carbon atoms and then uh, once uh, the carbon atoms are uh, atoms are created on some substrate deposited with some catalyst the catalyst uh, catalyzes the catenation property of uh, carbon means catenation means combining uh, carbon atom ten, trying to form a bond with itself and that carbon atoms uh, uh, start growing in the form of hexagonal ring and align vertically and starts growing in the form of tube. So that is how they prepare in CBD method. Uh, this method uh, uh, consists of four components. The first one you need a carbon source uh, which can be easily uh, vaporized and it can be easily uh, dissociated into atoms. And the second one is uh, you have to carry out this reaction at high temperature because you need to decompose the carbon source hydrocarbon source into atoms, you need to have a, a temperature of 1000 to, 1000 to 2000 degrees centigrade. So for that uh, temperature, if you are carrying out the reaction, you have to maintain oxygen free atmosphere. Otherwise the carbon gets converted to carbon dioxide, you won't get carbon nanotube. So therefore to maintain inert atmosphere, third important is uh, the inert gas you have to maintain, argon or nitrogen gas you have to maintain. Then uh, you will, you should have a catalyst. Catalyst is required for the a growth of carbon nanotube and a substrate. Sub substrate is the place where uh, this carbon nanotube starts growing in a furnace. Okay, these are the five co components are required. Uh, generally, for the hydrocarbon source, uh, people have used acetylene gas, ethylene gas, propylene, methane, benzene, etc. And there are there are also some reports uh, saying that uh, polymers and carbon mon monoxide can also be used as a source of uh, carbon. And to maintain the inert gas, uh, uh, you can go for argon gas, uh, pure ox argon or nitrogen, which is free from oxygen. And the catalyst, uh, they use some organometallic catalyst uh, because uh, they need to be uh, in vapor state. You have to vaporize them easily. Therefore, organometallic precursors can be used. Uh, for example, ferrocene, nicolosine, and cobaltocene. So these are organometallic compounds. They decompose to form metal uh, catalyst and uh, substrates such as uh, some carbon quartz generally they use quartz for most of the 
carbon nanotubes preparation and silicon so these are the important uh, components required uh, in this method and uh, we need to have high temperature to maintain that high temperature you should have a furnace okay uh, the mechanism that i'll explain uh, okay uh, in, the, in this slide so this is the typical uh, uh, chemical uh, cvd vapor deposition method which consists of uh, the red color one is a furnace uh, which uh, can provide the temperature of uh, 1000 to 2000 degrees centigrade okay and here we have kept the quartz substrate and here uh, we are growing the carbon nanotubes then uh, to grow carbon nanotube we should have a carbon source carbon source and uh, catalyst source are filled in this injection pump and then uh, we have a argon cylinder uh, which uh, which is used to provide inert atmosphere in the furnace okay first this uh, furnace is uh, completely made free from oxygen by passing the argon gas for one or two hours so that uh, argon gas enters into the furnace it will push all the oxygen gas outside once it is made oxygen free atmosphere uh, the temperature is increased to the uh, whatever the temperature which is required maybe some 1000 degree or 1500 or 2000 degree centigrade then uh, with the optimized uh, composition of uh, this catalyst ferrocene fe cp is a cyclopentadienyl ion ferrocene is a catalyst uh, and toluene is, is a source and polymer uh, uh, source uh, is a source of carbon they are all mixed okay and they are made in the form of uh, vapors and pump uh, this is a pre-eater to remove any moisture uh, if it is present with a maintaining controlled organ flow and injection flow rate so uh, we, uh, the carbon nanotube starts growing here okay on the substrate and the quad substrate so the unreacted and the decomposed hydrogen gas they are coming out through this exhaust so this is the way they use uh, CVD method for the preparation of uh, carbon nanotubes. Let us look at uh, this another picture showing uh, uh, the CVD method. Okay, I'll just skip this. I'll let let me explain the mechanism of uh, CVD uh, that uh, in which uh, CNT is grown. Uh, generally, the carbon nanotubes are grown. It follows uh, two mechanism. One is uh, the tip growth you can see this is the tip growth and this is the bottom growth okay uh, in the furnace we have uh, this is the furnace uh, this is the substrate we have a substrate and a metal uh, which is getting deposited on the surface of the substrate then we pass the hydrocarbon source c6hy once that c6hy enters into the furnace and deposits it on the metal so because of the high temperature at inert atmosphere it dissociates into atoms carbon and hydrogen so hydrogen free radicals uh, they combine to form h2 and they come out through that exhaust and also helps in maintaining inert atmosphere oxygen free atmosphere once the carbon atoms are getting uh, saturated on the metal surface the carbon atom free radicals combine to form hexagonal rings and also start uh, joining because carbon atom is having a wonderful catenation property it has a tendency to combine with itself and starts growing starts growing on the at the tip of the tube okay carbon nanotube sticks here and this is uh, the reaction is going to take place uh, between the metal nanoparticles and the tip of the carbon nanotubes so that uh, hydrocarbon uh, is coming and sitting and dissociating and starts producing large quantity of carbon atoms and starts combining and uh, precipitating 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 means forming the carbon nanotubes and finally detach that the metal nanoparticles detaches from the substrate and the reaction is taking place on the tip of the uh, carbon nanotube because the metal nanoparticles are deposited on the tip and the bottom part is sticking to the substrate this is one mechanism they proposed another mechanism is uh, the metal nanoparticle uh, remain on the substrate it will not come out okay it will stick to the substrate like this uh, then uh, the process whatever the dissociation uh, diffusion or adsorption and the precipitation steps uh, follows on the surface of the metal only uh, this is the bottom growth uh, mechanism that is being proposed uh, for the cnt growth so uh, let us look at uh, the four steps which are involved in these two uh, mechanisms uh, the four steps uh, which are involved in the cnt growth we will have a substrate uh, on which the metal nanoparticles are deposited uh, maybe of different size 
uh, size of the metal nanoparticles also matters uh, which uh, which has a large influence on diameter of the carbon nanotube uh, some report says here uh, the first step is the diffusion of hydrocarbon in a, these are all happening in the inert atmosphere at high temperature so hydrocarbon source c2h4 first it will absorb on a metal nanoparticle that is the first step diffusion for then adsorption second step we can see this these are the blue colored uh, uh, circle uh, you know, spheres are hydrogens and the white colors are carbons after adsorption after uh, c2h4 is absorbing because of a high temperature and inert atmosphere it dissociates h2 is getting de dissociated and coming out as h2 gas and carbon atoms are deposited on the metal nanoparticles okay again another gas is diffuses and adsorbs and dissociation like that uh, n number of uh, carbon atoms are getting uh, created on the surface of metal nanoparticles these carbon atoms are uh, single atoms means like a free radicals they are highly reactive and uh, unstable to attain uh, stability because it is having high catenation property it combines with itself uh, with other carbon atoms and starts uh, joining uh, joining with uh, themselves we call it as a precipitation and they start growing vertically <clears throat> this is the bottom growth mechanism you can expect these two these four uh, four to five steps so that uh, these five steps continuously happening and uh, results in the formation of carbon nanotubes so this is the mechanism uh, this is available in the literature for the growth of uh, carbon nanotubes okay so these are the importances of cvd uh, the first important thing you should maintain our inert atmosphere carbon source you should take care catalyst and growth temperature generally uh, some uh, report says low temperature yields multi world carbon nanotubes high temperature yields uh, single world carbon nanotubes and uh, the cnt's uh, for the growth of cnt they use uh, cobaltocene nicolocene and cobalt uh, are uh, ferrocenes as organometallic compounds which can be easily vaporized and as i already uh, also told you that uh, the size of uh, the diameter of the carbon nanotube depends on the size of the catalyst catalyst particle if the iron particle size is big then you will have a, the, the diameter of the carbon nanotube is very wide so if it is small you can have uh, the diameter of the cnt uh, small it can be used in the form of uh, uh, this method is used to prepare cnt powders and thick films on some substrate if you want to have on substrates and cnt can be grown you can have a straight carbon nanotubes vertically aligned without substrate if you carry out the reaction you can have entangled and coiled shape of carbon nanotubes these are the multiple uh, options available for this uh, cvd method okay this is one of the best uh, thing you can control you can control argon atmosphere you can control the flow rate of uh, uh, carbon source metal nanoparticles you can vary the temperature so by varying all these things temperature uh, flow rate of air uh, you can control the types of carbon nanotubes you can have multi walled carbon nanotubes single walled in among single walled you can have uh, chiral zigzag or uh, armchair can be tuned by this method that is one of the advantage okay so this is about uh, cnt carbon nanotube and the method used for uh, cnt that is uh, chemical vapor